Peters, where he in the Italian Dolomites, the village of Basilga de Pinay, home of a world-class 400-meter speed skating oval and site of the 1995 World Speed Skating Championships. Mother Nature may not be cooperating, but this crowd is ready. Go to the stop. On a cloudy, overcast, and snowing day at Basilga de Pinay, welcome to the 1995 World Speed Skating Championships. Bob Barsha and Peter Carruthers with you. This crowd is absolutely phenomenal, raising the temperature around this oval by about 10 degrees simply through their own joy. And they are pumped up. However, I don't think we're going to see fast times due to the weather. This is the men's 500 meter, a full out sprint. On the left, Kenji Shirahata of Japan, who finished sixth in this 500-meter event one year ago at the World Championships. But in blue, starting on the inside of the 400-meter oval, ready to make the crossover, Davide Carta of Italy, the crowd darling. Look at the visibility as they flash down the back stretch. One all-out lap plus 100 meters. Oh, and the Japanese on the inside of the right of your screen loses his grip. He will be disqualified, but Carto will lunge to the finish line. Having to stay in a full sprint throughout the entire race. 37-94, Davide Carta of Italy will take first place in our first pair. With the weather the way it is and the visibility being poor, these are going to keep the times down, but you have to forget that. Stay down on the knees and forget it and just go. And so Carta has set the standard that the rest of the skaters will try to match as we open competition in these men's World Speed Skating Championships. Now our next pair will feature the odds-on favorite for the overall title from the Netherlands, Rentia Rietzma. There he is on the right. On the left, Hiroyuki Nuaki of Japan, who was the runner-up in the 500-meter event last year to surprise winner Eads Postma of the Netherlands. And Rishma is an overall strong skater. He is good in all distances. A lot of training required to do that, to be a great sprinter and long-distance skater. Each skater will skate all four events, 500 meters, 5,000 meters, 1,500 meters, and 10,000 meters in an effort to score points toward the overall world title on the crossover. Ritzma hesitated slightly, giving the Japanese the advantage as he flashes by on the inside. Dropping down and back, Ritzma not where he wants to be right now, but trying to make up ground. To the line they come. Noaki 37-91 for first place, Ritzma in third. Under the circumstances, exceptional performances given the conditions with snow falling. We'll take a quick time out and return for more of the 500 meter heats. Stand by for more from Italy. Back to Baselga di Pine in Italy, home of 1992 world all around champion Roberto Siegel. The new champion will be crowned today in the bedlam of these world championships. Hello again, everyone. I'm Bob Varsha, along with ESPN skating analyst Peter Carruthers. The weather is very much a negative factor at these world championships, but the Italian crowd is a big positive. We should point out going in, Peter, that this is a rebuilding year for the American squad. Well, it really is. With the retirement of Dan Jansen and Bonnie Blair, I think the U.S. speed skating team is in a rebuilding stage. But right now we have Dave Tamburino to look forward to. He actually broke three of Eric Hyden's junior records. So he shows a lot of promise for the future. But someone to really look for is Ringer Ritzma from the Netherlands. The Dutch have always had a strong history with speed skating. And he is good in every single distance. And that's what it takes to be the overall winner. But I, what I think is going to be fun is to watch this Italian audience push some of these people towards some good times in this event. And with that, we are ready for our next pair. This is Andrei Anyufrenko of Russia, who finished fifth at 500 meters a year ago when this championship was held at Gothenburg in Sweden. And there is his opponent, Takehiro Nozaki of Japan. Every stroke in these beginning seconds critical to the overall race. Remember, we're not going to see times down around Dan Jansen's at 35 because of this weather, and it is outdoors. Zaki with the advantage, skating the inner loop till they get to the backside and cross over. And Anna Franco changing over to the inner lane now in the back stretch. 
Anna Franco taking a strong lead, has to stay with it. Down to the line they come. Anya Franco crosses in 38.55. Good only for fourth place in the early rounds of 500 competition. And the performance in the 500 is important because that forms the basis of a skater's score throughout the rest of the day. Now our next pair. This is Bernard Lehmgruber of Austria skating against Korean Kyuhuk Lee. Skaters nowadays having to be used to skating outside in inclement weather like this and having divine conditions inside. It varies. See the officials at the back immediately onto the oval with snow shovels. It is snowing very heavily here in the Italian Alps. A good first 100 meters for Lee. Fairly close in the back stretch at the crossover point. But Lee will have the inner circle, the shorter radius on the second corner and down to the line. He comes with a huge lead. Looking for 37.91. I don't think he'll get it. No, 38.55 for Lee. Good for fourth place. But keep in mind, there are four events to skate, and the 500 is simply the first. Here's a look at the final results of the 500 meters. Nowaki, Carta of Italy, Ritzma of the Netherlands, and Lee of Korea tying with Anya Franco of Russia. You can bet that Zamboni is going to get plenty of work this weekend. Two Italians in the top six with one event completed at these men's speed skating world championships. Nothing will dampen the enthusiasm of this Italian crowd with Italians out front. Stay with us. Back at the men's speed skating world championships near Trento, Italy, Bob Varsha and Peter Carruthers with you. The crowd has not stopped the pounding of the drums since this event began. There is Frank Dietrich of Germany making his bid for the overall world championship. This was Frank Dietrich in the men's 10,000 meters. And this is the race of endurance. Remember, 25 laps around. Incredible stamina needed, and it's all about timing, getting a rhythm going so that you don't burn out. 27 years of age, Frank Dietrich came from the old East German sports system. He was a part of class of 200 young athletes selected to become speed skaters of that group. He is the only one still competing. From Leipzig in Germany, he used to share a training rink with German Olympic figure skating champion Katarina Witt. Right now, Dietrich has a big lead over Austrian Christian Eminger. The lactic acid building up the lower back, getting tight. We're at altitude here. It all plays a factor. When you consider that the number one performance of all time, 13 minutes, 30 seconds roughly, by Johan Olof Koss of Norway, the times tell you everything you need to know about the difficulty of performing at this altitude. Under the Samalog scoring system of these world championships, the 10,000 meters is divided, the time that is, is divided by 20 increments of 500 meters to determine a skater's score. Frank Dietrich moved into first place at 14 minutes, 24 seconds. Elsewhere in the 10K, Rintja Ritzma, a man who has seen his disappointments at the world championship level all across the years, has his opportunity to step into the spotlight this year, and he made the most of it in the 10,000. Skating under the lights to the line at 14 minutes, 9 seconds, taking the 10,000 meters, while Kaiji Sirahata of Japan, who finished fifth a year ago in this event, found himself in second place. Ritzma, known as Tarzan, to his Dutch countrymen. And the crowd, a continuing theme throughout this two days of competition. And let's lay credit where credit is due. A lot of Dutch fans in that crowd cheering for their man, Rintje Rietzma. A gold medal at 10,000 meters. Five gold medals in all to be awarded at these championships. One for each event and the overall. An American Dave Tamburino, Peter, showed well in the 10,000 meters. And with all eyes focused on this young man over the next few years, he'll be working on those stroke mechanics and trying to improve his times. A bright future for speed skating with all of the facilities that are being built, possibly in Utah and Minnesota. 
Here's a look at the final results at 10,000 meters. Ritzma over Shirahata, Nozaki, and Dietrich. Former world champion Roberto Sigol of Italy in fifth spot. Now let's take up the men's 1,500 meters. Dietrich on the right, skating against Canadian Neil Marshall. And a lot of explosive energy from Marshall. Bringing his skates right back to the center point in between each stroke. Looking strong. There's a good look at Marshall. Now, some of the competitors in these championships will not skate all four events, but if you're in the running for the overall, you must skate all four. And this could be an advantage for Dietrich, who is going for the overall championship, skating against a quick starter in Marshall. So much off-ice training involved in speed skating also. During the summer, a lot of weights, a lot of bike training. It takes an athlete that is both strong and agile to be a speed skater. The 1,500 meters, slightly more than three laps around the oval. In fact, closer to four laps than it is to three. And from the sheer burn of the 500 to the pacing of the 10,000, 1,500 meters and the 5,000 form the crux of any one shot at the overall. Bringing those skates right back to center each time. Looking for acceleration in the crossovers. Staying down and keeping that rhythm. Looking for the blend of speed and power. Oftentimes skaters will tell you, the harder you try, the slower you go. So above all, you must remember to relax. Not easy to do when the back is on fire and those legs are burning. Marshall with a quick look back over his shoulder. Down to the line he comes. 153.86. Dietrich lagging at 158.39. So Neil Marshall takes the lead at 1,500 meters. And with that, we'll take a timeout. More of the men's speed skating world championships coming up. Third place for Nuwaki, eight for Taubenrauch. Now you can see here in the final stretch how hard and difficult it is, the grimace on the face. Trying to stand up, keep the arms, the technique starting to break down here. Everything's on fire, every muscle, not easy. On to our next pair. Look at the technology in the skates of Japanese Kenji Shirahata skating against Falco Zanstra from the Netherlands. You bring up a good point, a lot of research and development to keep these skates aerodynamic. The blades of the skates impossibly narrow and sharp. Shirahata has a shot at the overall world championship. What a triumph that would be for a Japanese skater. This is a sport that has traditionally belonged to the Dutch, to the Norwegians, to the Canadians, and to the Americans. But the Japanese are coming on strong, not only at the long track of 400 meters, but especially so in short track speed skating. Interesting contrast in styles here. The Japanese with both arms tucked behind for the aerodynamic tuck. The Dutchman going for one arm behind and the other pumping. And a lot of times that is a personal choice. What works for one may not work for the other. The kinesiology can vary. Now listen to the crowd come alive. I'm presuming that is for Zanstra. A big Dutch contingent on hand to cheer their team along. Trying to stay down on the knees, stay relaxed, and not break the rhythm. Bell lap for Falco Zanstra and Kenji Shirahata. And Zanstra's armband falling down to his wrist, trying to fling it off, he falls down. How unfortunate, that armband there for purposes of determining what lane he should be in. How is that possible? As you see Shirahata dashing for the finish line, Hoping to keep his chances at the World Championship alive. 153.39, and you bet he does it. Shirahata moves into second place.
There is Zanstra, who will have to get up and finish. Though no doubt he is wondering why he even bothers at this point. That's the most amazing thing. Each skater starts with an armband, white if you start on the inner lane, red on the outer, and watch what and happens to Zanstra. He tries to fling it off. Unfortunately, he flings it right down at his outer skate, trips over it, something you will not forget at a World Championship. If I were him, next time I'd throw it into the crowd. He hooked his own skate with the armband, and down he went. A disastrous mistake for Zanstra. Well, the crowd still at a fever pitch. We'll be back to Trento in Italy to crown the new world champion. Stay with us. To Trento in Italy, the Italian Alps, quite brown at this time of year. Thank goodness for refrigerated outdoor speed skating ovals. Site of this year's men's world championships. Bob Barsha and Peter Carruthers with you. Let's take a look at the highlights of the 5,000 meters. Christian Eminger and Rene Taubenrauch. Robin Rock, we saw struggle earlier in the men's 1500 meters, but in the distance events, he seems much more at home. And Eminger with a very rounded back. It's amazing to see the different technique and style of these skaters. The German Taubin Rock coming through for second place. Eminger sixth at 5,000. Each man's time divided by 10 to produce his point total for the event. Elsewhere in the men's 5,000, Sergei Sabenko of Kazakhstan skating against Frank Dietrich of Germany. Dietrich showing all of his strength and all of his experience. Six minutes and 23 seconds into this race. Again, a lot of endurance required. Even though it's not the 10,000 meter, you're halfway between that and a lesser race. So you've got to maintain speed but not burn out at the same time. And that's what makes the individual splits at each 200 meter increment so important to these skaters. And as you'll see, the coach is playing a very important role, telling them to either speed up or slow down. Dietrich with a fine time to the line he comes, takes the lead and wins the men's 5,000 meters, giving him a big boost towards a possible world overall title. Saibanko happy with a sixth place performance at 5,000. There are the final results. Taubenrock second, Nozaki third, Shirahata fourth, and Renta Ritzma of the Netherlands fifth, the front runner for the world title. Now here is 1992 world champion in the overall, Roberto Siegel of Italy. He is skating in front of his hometown crowd here in Trento and having to keep the nerves at bay because too much excitement might put him over the top and he may lose his timing. He's got to stay relaxed and focused. And on top of everything else, he is skating against the front runner for the overall world championship, Rentia Ritzma. Both looking terrific off the line here. Siegel terribly disappointed in his world championship year. A famous Italian sports newspaper listed the 20 most important Italian sporting events of the year. And Siegel's world championship was not listed. He was absolutely heartbroken, joked at least. Italians thought he was joking about leaving the country. But he came back, skating on home ice against the best in the world. Now the crossover in the backstretch. Siegel taking the inside lane. And flying by Ritzma. For his part, Ritzma is trying to shake a reputation as a bit of a ladies' man, perhaps not training as hard as he should over the years. Always in the shadow of the number one man in the world, most recently, Johan Olive Koss. Like Koss, he is a huge man. Look at the thighs on Rentia Ritzma skating against the smaller Italian Siegel. If he can win this, it'll seal his overall title. Ritzma, looking at the splits, he knows exactly where he needs to be. Keeping the timing, staying strong, keeping the technique. Coaches advising. 
Now Rietzma beginning to draw away from the 92 world champion. This is it. Look, he has it. To the line. 153-31, taking the lead and clinching the world overall title. <laughs> A happy Rintia Rietzma is swept off his feet. Final results of the 1500 meters, Rintia Rietzma over Kenji Shirahata and Neil Marshall. But the Dutch in the crowd, they know that their man has claimed the gold medal that he has sought for so many years. Rentia Rietzma first, Kenji Shirahata second, Roberto Siegel third, American Dave Tamburino in fifth, and KC Boutiette in 16th. I'm Bob Barsha for Peter Carruthers. Thanks for being with us. So long, everyone.